In the 10 years up to 1968, a total of 16,000 steam locomotives were withdrawn from active service, with almost all of them ending at the knackers like any other kind of scrap. A very few went to museums or enthusiasts, but it was a great time for scrap. In 1963 alone, 500 locomotives, 4,000 coaches, 130,000 wagons, and 250,000 tons of rail were smashed, broken, and cut up into little pieces, ready for making into something else. But the old days still lived after a fashion. One scrap merchant at Barry in South Wales had kept over 200 engines in case his men ever grew short of work. Wagons were easier to break up and the locos could bide their time and rust. From Di Woodham's point of view, it was good to be at the receiving end of scrap from British Rail. The government announced that there was to be a £250 million programme to modernise British Rail. And I thought, well, that's, uh, that's a gravy train. I'm going to get on it, <laughs> one way or another. And uh, Anyway, uh, I was accepted as, uh, as um, uh, a man who was allowed to tender and uh, who never stopped since. As far as railway was concerned, rolling stock, engines, railway lines, so forth. And uh, we have been breaking up British railways now for nearly 35 years. It took uh, really 140 years to build British railways and we have literally scrapped it in 30, 30 to 40 years. Word got around about Dye Woodham's scrapyard and his 200 engines became a place of pilgrimage, not so much for youngsters who see everywhere as potential playground, but for adults who in the end bought every single one, whatever its condition. So if we look at some of the engines which have left Barry in the past, and are now in full steam, it's a fantastic performance. And this particular example, which uh, is pretty rough, but uh, I forecast that uh, when the preservationists have finished with it, she'll be like the day she was built. Magic, pure magic. In 1966, sold for scrap to Di Woodham and waiting for the end, was the express engine port line of the Merchant Navy class. Instead, and 16 years later, the rusting machinery was bought by a group intent upon recreating this piece of the past. Such enthusiasm was plainly abnormal and promptly earned stern questioning from a visiting journalist. Why do you think people are prepared to put in time, effort and spend money to restore an old hulk like this? It's a funny thing, it's a, I, I suppose you could say it's a peculiar British disease, uh, steam railway enthusiasm. It uh, attracts an awful lot of people and uh, we've put a lot of time in and we've got an awful lot of time to put in over the next uh, five or seven years, depending on the sort of support we can get, but uh, she'll run again and she'll run very fast. Initially, and with a police escort, six and a half thousand pounds worth of engine weighing some 90 tons, ran very slowly. But number 35027 was on its way. It's been such a transformation from its original state that uh, you look forward to be able to do another one because you've been through it all. You know how to get round the jobs. You know how you know the problems you're going to encounter. And you know the people to talk to about it. You know the places to get the equipment. The second one has always got to be the easier one, really. And uh, I mean, I look forward to getting on with it. Be all that as it may, it must be more fun with the finished product and marvelling yet again at the power and glory of steam. And remembering 
that this huge machine had just been rusting away as scrap.